Ready is relentless. Ready is fearless. Ready is fearing no foe. Ready for the next level? Renew your season ticket now and support Rangers into season 2021. Prices are frozen for next season and the renewals deadline is extended. Visit rangers.co.uk slash renew to secure your season ticket today. Always Rangers. Always loyal. Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of the Four Lads Had a Dream podcast. My name is Stephen Clifford, I'm your host. Um, joining me as usual, co-host, a good friend of mine, he's the Chief Sports Writer at the Herald and Glasgow Times Group, Mr Chris Jack. Chris, how are you? Not too bad, Stevie. Uh, thanks for having us on. Looking forward to this one. Something a wee bit different for us, uh, but another uh, really good guest. I'm sure it'll be another uh, really interesting chat we're going to have. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is the first um, episode in a, a special kind of um, series on women's football that we wanted to do and highlight. Um, delighted to have um, another co-host with us today. Um, she is better known as being um, a tour guide occasionally at Ibrox. She's also a massive ambassador for women's football. Mary McKenzie. Mary, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. Now, before we introduce our guest, I have to um, share a wee bit of truth with everyone. This is the second time we've done this. Um, second time our guest joined us, so it's a, a massive thank you, really, to um, Lana Cleland. Lana, thanks for joining us again. Hello, thanks for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I take full responsibility for this. I'm not sure how it happened, but I managed to um, not record or corrupt the recording the first time. So here we are again. It's brilliant to have Lana, Mary and Chris with us. So let's delve into it. Um, Lana is very well known. She is currently with Fiorentina out in Italy. Played a massive part in the World Cup for Scotland um, last year. Um, she's a, a huge name in women's football for Scotland. And it's brilliant to have um, her with us. So let's let's journey back, um, Lana. Let's let's go right back to the very beginning. Um, and can you tell us about your early football heroes and who were the biggest influences on you um, as a young girl starting out? Yeah, sure. Um, early football heroes. I remember probably your likes of Gascoigne and Alberts, um, and then a little bit later on Moles and Boyd, just because they were goal scorers, and that's really what I love to do. So. Those are the kind of people that, that I looked up to um, back in the day. So you very much then, um, early kind of goals in, in football would to be to be a goal scorer and a, a striker, would that be right? Yeah, exactly. I played um, for quite a bit of my career on the wing. Um, and then um, one of my coaches decided that she would try me up front because I was quite, quite good at scoring goals and they were missing a striker. So I got put up top into that number nine. So your early kind of formulative career years, you were at um, Lethem and then St Johnston Girls. Can you talk us through how you made the breakthrough um, to that level, how you were kind of scouted and how you started? And tell us a wee bit about, um, I, I, not not so much the difficulties, but breaking into to football and, and, and getting started in your career. Yeah, so basically I just started playing football um, with the boys at primary school um, and then they asked me to join their local team. Um, but obviously as, as a female um, back then you could only play up until a certain age with the boys so um, then I got scouted from the local local girls team. Um, I went there for the season, that was that was the team at Lethem when, when we played Tayside Celtic and, and we beat them 12-1 and I scored all 12 goals. Um, it was nice scoring 12 goals against a Celtic. Yeah, just really from there girls football kind of started to grow a lot more. Still had to travel a fair distance if you wanted if you wanted a good enough team, um, so that's kind of how Rangers came about um, when they created their girls team. So before we we kind of get to the Rangers part of it, how was your career shaping at Latham Le and St Johnston before your move to Rangers? How were you getting on, and and who were your coaches and, and who were your teammates that helped you make the next step? Yeah, so back then it was quite difficult. Um, it was all just volunteers, parents that were taking the team, so. Um, like from a technical or a tactical aspect, you weren't really learning much as a young kid um, that maybe you, you needed for back then. But yeah, um, teammates that have been been um, with me since back then, you're talking Lisa Evans, who's obviously still in the women's national team as well. We, we shared under under 15 team at St Johnson and then the likes of Emma Mitchell as well um, within those teams. So there's a fair bit of talent that came out of Perth, um, to be fair, but 
um, yeah, no, they were good times, but obviously to go on to bigger and better things, um, had to make the move. You mentioned bigger and better things there, Lana. Rangers was obviously one of those bigger and better things at the, the early part of your career. How did the, the move to Rangers come around and was there any, any hesitation in saying yes to them? Yeah, it was um, pretty random. Um, they just um, created their first under 17 girls team. They took on Drum Chapel, I think it was. And no, we just we played them in a friendly and I knew that I was I was looking for something new. So my dad had a had a chat with the coach, um, who was Gary Gibson at the time. And yeah, uh, just when Rangers ask you to go for them, as a Rangers fan, there's really no other answer than when I'm going to do everything I can to, to be there and to play for the jersey. So, How, how was the Rangers ladies set up at that time? There's obviously been a, a bit of like, PR and a bit of uh, publicity about the moves that they made in the last uh, couple of months in terms of the, the money they've uh, put in under the, under the board and also the work they're doing there at the, at the training centre. Very different back in, back in those days, I'm assuming. Yeah, of course, massively different. Um, we trained, I think it was at one, once a week it started at Murray Park. Uh, you're training really late at night. And other days we would train at the Ibex Complex. Um, but then gradually it increased um, to more nights, to, to more times at Murray Park. Um, so gradually it increased um, compared to what it is now. Um, it seems a long, long time ago, but um, to see what they're doing now and, and how much they're putting into the women's setups. Um, Really, really exciting to watch. You also lived the dream and got to play for the uh, play for the team that you always uh, supported. Is there a wee kind of tinge of regret, if you like, that you couldn't do that now when the setup is as good as it now is? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, Rangers will always be be my one, my first team. So, um, having having been a part of it um, makes me really happy. Um, obviously, I've gone on um, to some different things and been out here in Italy. So, um, I can't really say like disappointed of, of how it's happened, but. Um, definitely appreciative that I got the chance to play for them and you never know in the future. There's a part of you that's in a way quite proud because the success that you've had over in Italy and the success you've had with the women's uh, national team, that's all played into the game in Scotland really growing and thriving and that's probably part of the reason why Rangers are now taking it so seriously. So in a way you might have played your own small part in convincing the club that you know, the women's team is something that's worth putting money into, putting uh, resources into and you also see the players and the, and the staff have brought in as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you look at the national team, how about... 80-90% of the girls are playing out with of Scotland. Um, so I think that's, that's that's got to bring to attention to these clubs that, that they're losing the best players. They're um, then having to go to the younger ones um, to create teams. So I think if you want to you want to keep the best talent in Scotland, then, then these teams have got to change professional and, and give all the girls the best opportunities that they can. In terms of your Rangers career highlights, is there any, any games or any goals that stand out for you? Um, I mean, there was a couple of cup finals in there. There was one in the, the first division um, in the first year of the women's team um, being created. There's some goals in there against Celtic. Um, I think I was the first female to score in an old farm at under-17s. And then I remember scoring against um, Celtic in a semi-final in the, in the cup the first year that, that we were in, in the league. So um, those are pretty special moments for me, yeah. How, how does the old fun game compare to you? Obviously, I've grown up watching plenty of them. They used to play your own, your own key part in one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, growing up, um, I never thought that I would be able to be able to play in, in an old firm. So having lived that moment and, and being a Rangers fan and stepping on that pitch and playing against them, I think just makes it a little bit more special. So um, definitely proud moments from myself, yeah. Was it then quite difficult to make the decision to, to leave Rangers and uh, go to Spartans? Or was it a case of that's obviously next okay, next step in your career that you felt you had to take at that time? Yeah, I mean, of course it was hard. Um, I always just wanted to play for Rangers and, and stay there, but um, women's, women's football was evolving um, and Spartans were a top, top team back in the day. Um, so to be able to go and train and play with those players week in, week out, I think it was just the best thing for, for my performance to keep on improving. What was the main area that you felt needed improving moving to Spartans and did, now did you find that improvement? Did, did you Make the, make the changes to your game that you really felt could then go and take you to the levels that you've ultimately reached? Yeah, I think just challenging yourself against um, the top players. There was internationals um, throughout the team, so challenging yourself every day in training and, and improving on little things to, to, make you, to make you that little bit better. Um, and obviously I went on to, to get my first A-squad cap um, at Spartan, so obviously the move, the move helped me 
um, and I'm very much grateful for everything you've done for me. And also your time in Sparta then gets you a move to a move out to Italy. How, how did that move come around? Was it a good or a, was it an easy decision for you to make? You no, know, the chance to the chance to you know, go and experience a new league, a new way of playing, but also the chance to go and play out in Italy as well and can see how that uh, see how the women's game is out there. Yeah, exactly. Um, it came around really randomly. Um, I basically just an agent got in contact with myself and my dad. Um, asking me to, to go out for a trial um, and I just jumped at the chance. You know, it was supposed to be for five months for the second half of their season at Barry and I thought it, it's an experience. I'll go there for five months to come back, a better person and hopefully I can gain something on the football aspect and see, see what it's like in a different country and um, things just kind of grew arms and legs after those five months and, and obviously I'm still here after nearly six years so you can tell it went pretty well. Just a last one from me, Lana. As I say, it's also going, also going really well for you. Did you ever think that when you made that that move out there, that it would have really got to a level that it's got to for you, and, and your career would have kind of moved on as as much as it had? No, absolutely not. Like I said before, I thought it was just going to be a five month um, stint to see to see what football would be like in a different country. Um, and right now, being able to say that I've been here playing for the last five and a half, about six years. To see how much it's grown in that time um, makes me feel really special to be a part of it um, and to help the growth and, and to try and put Italy on the map as well. And I think you can see the improvement as well from the Italian national team with how they performed in the last World Cup as well. Well, at Fiorentina, obviously it's a massive name in world football and they've got a great history and, and a very established club. When Fiorentina said they were interested in you, what was your feelings at that time? Yeah, they'd actually been interested in the season before um, and I just didn't feel like I was quite ready for that move. Um, so when it came around the season after and they asked for me again, um, I considered that so much more um, the second time. It's just the fact that, that Fiorentina, the men's team, were, were fully affiliated to them. They were fully behind them. They were the first men's team to take on a women's team in Italy. Um, so you could see that trust um, within the club that they wanted to push the women's team and, and try and be the best. Um, and it's just a club that wants to win things. They want to be on top. They want to be, they want to be up there and and create history, if you like, and then be a part part of Serie A and, and to be winning things. So it was massively um, intriguing to be a, to be a part of. So in Florence, you've obviously had that ability to step up to challenge for you know league titles and trophies, um, and obviously in Champions League football. Um, can you tell us a bit about your career in Fiorentina so far and what your personal highlights have been? Yeah, so far it's been pretty special. Um, the first year we won the Super Cup, um, so that was my first major trophy um, for a long, long time. So that was pretty special. Um, and from there we've had, I'm not going to say disappointing because obviously coming second and, and runners up to things, it's its good to be there. But um, me as an individual, I want to be winning things. So um, obviously Juventus has gone on to win most things the last, the last two seasons, but um, we've definitely been pushing them and we just, we just need to keep on going and try and find that, that little bit more to, to be competing with them and to be winning the, the title again. You've also had um, some comparisons to the career of Rose Riley. Um, had, do you ever actually heard of Rose until recently? Because I know her story is quite a unique one where she's obviously left Scotland and moved to Italy. Um, but can you tell us if you've even spoke to her? Yeah, so I first found out the story of Rose Riley um, when I was in Barry, actually. There was a journalist um, who tried to explain to me, obviously back then I wasn't very good at Italian, but um, basically his, his father, who was also a journalist, had interviewed Rose Riley um, back in the day. So that kind of got me a little bit interested to know that there'd been another Scot um, out there in the league. So I did a little bit digging and, and found out some more. And then obviously, as the years have gone on, more has come out about her successes and, and quite rightly so it's a story that most people should know because it really is incredible. Um, and yeah, I have actually spoke to her. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking to her, even if it was just over message, um, she's been messaging me saying um, like congratulations for everything you've achieved. So um, yeah, pretty proud moment to to be recognised on the same the same line as her if you want um, with her successes over here. But definitely got a lot more things to win, and if I want to be on the same footpath as moving on to your Scotland career, um, you've obviously been captain internationally from a young age right through to the women's national team. Um, can you tell us what it was like to get your, your first call up to the, the full squad? Yeah, I actually remember the, the call that my coach gave me. Um, I thought she was joking to start with. Um, 
I just wasn't expecting it. I didn't know if I was ready. Um, and then the team were playing a friendly against um, Cameroon up in Aberdeen. So I got the call and yeah, it was pretty special for me and my family. It's something that I've been working towards for a long, long time. So um, to, be able, to be able to put on that shirt and represent your country really was special. You were also involved in, you know, two major moments for Scottish women's football. Um, obviously, totally different reasons. Um, the Euros in 2017 was also the first major tournament that Scotland had ever qualified for. How did it feel to be involved in that time and knowing that you were off to a major tournament? Yeah, it was pretty special. I actually feel it was a long, long time ago now, even if it was only a couple of years ago. But to be a part of the first team going to a major tournament really was special. Um, I think as, as a group, felt like we'd achieved something incredible because it's been a long, long time that we were pushing. Um, so to finally be there um, and competing um, was an incredible um, feeling, but obviously we felt a little bit disappointed with, with the outcome. And obviously then you go to push on to bigger and better things. So do you think that disappointment in missing out on the quarterfinals by, I think it was a single goal, um, do you think that really helped push for the next big competition, which was obviously the Women's World Cup? Yeah, exactly. I think you're spot on. And I think you can tell even from the qualifying stages of the World Cup, it was a team with grit and determination that was maybe missing the previous the previous campaign. Um, I think we'd felt that the feeling of being at a, a, a major tournament really was special and we wanted to be there again. So I think it just brought something different and something and something extra out in us um, to push on and to obviously then qualify without um, having to go via playoffs or anything like that. It really just was incredible. So it was actually quite an exciting um, qualifying path, you know, to get to the, the last game of the qualifiers and be, I think it was equal with Switzerland on points, but they had a slightly better goal difference. How did you prepare for that match, knowing that you really had to win and obviously try and better Switzerland's result and to get an automatic qualifying place? Yeah, so obviously a lot of us will remember the, the Switzerland game at home. Um, it was obviously a draw, but... No, it was a draw at 2-1 and they, they felt that they'd, they'd already qualified and they were celebrating um, and we just didn't understand why because they hadn't qualified straight away. So then we go off to Albania and we knew that they had to go to Poland. So they were a very, very difficult team. We'd obviously had a hard result there as well. So it was a very exciting game. Um, obviously the nerves were high running into the game and I was actually on the bench and, and we heard the girls in the stand were telling us the score from the, the other tie. So we were counting down the minutes. Um, for the clock to, to run on the pitch and celebrate with the girls but um, it really was intense um, but feelings that are unbelievable you can't even describe how, how these moments make you feel. How many times have you watched that match back now? <laughs> the match not many but the last five minutes I've seen that clip probably about 400 times. <laughs> So obviously you had your, your big build up to um, the, the World Cup and did you feel that there was any pressure on obviously having your team named in the groups as England, Japan and Argentina? Did you feel any real pressures or did how did you feel like you were going to go into that competition? I mean, I feel like any pressures we only put on ourselves. We weren't really listening to, to what was being said out with, we know England and Japan are top, top teams in the world. Um, with previously Japan obviously being winners and England being one of the strongest teams um, in the last how many years. Uh, so we knew it was going to be hard. Um, we obviously set ourselves the task of getting out of the group. That's what we wanted to achieve. So obviously looking back, it's close, close results. I think you maybe would have took them before, but obviously it's just the last game that's that's hanging there um, in front with the disappointment. But um, yeah, it was obviously a great experience. So for you personally, obviously you scored a goal quite late in the game against Japan, who you obviously mentioned were previous World Cup winners and a fantastic side. Um, do you think you appreciated that moment at the time or do you think now looking back you can enjoy it a little bit more? No, I think in the moment there was so many emotions running high that I just wanted to win the game. I wanted to get something out of the game because I really wanted to go to the next stage. Um, that obviously never happened, so as soon as the game was over and I seen my family in the stand, um, I think I appreciated a little bit more, just knowing that they were there with me and got to witness it. Yeah, I think looking back on it now, it's appreciated much more. Um, I think obviously the in the moment, you can uh, some things kind of pass you by with adrenaline, etc. So definitely looking back on it now, it's very much a proud moment. And obviously the last game where Scotland had, I might be a bit biased saying this, but some interesting refereeing decisions that seem to be really unlucky and the girls obviously 
lost out on qualification to the next stage. Can you even describe how horrible that feeling must have been when, you know, it was utter disappointment after doing so well in the first half of that game? Yeah, I don't think I can describe it. I think you've probably just seen from the looks on all the girls' faces, um, disappointment, hurt, um, the change room was just silent after. It really wasn't a nice nice place or a nice feeling to feel. Um, but it just goes to show that football can give you every single emotion um, and it can literally turn on its head in the space of five minutes, um, like it did. But I just guess from, from these experiences, you just got to take them and, and turn them into a positive. And, and that's what we look to do as a squad. We look to the future and we look to the next European qualification because obviously we want to be there in England um, and we want to be competing again at the highest level. So we've just got to get on with this qualification and, and become a better side um, with all these experiences that we've had. When you were at the World Cup, were you aware of the, the backing that you had, both obviously in France and also back home? Um, it seemed to be that everywhere and everyone was looking out for the scores, even people that previously hadn't had any real interest in women's football. Yeah, I think going there, we didn't ex- not that we didn't expect it, but we didn't know how much of a support there would be. Um, I don't think it hit us until we walked out for the England game and the stand was nearly, nearly full when we were only just walking onto the pitch. So... That just kind of gives you that buzz straight away. It was just Scotland flags everywhere. They were shouting, they were screaming, they were singing. Um, it really was special. And then obviously to see the videos and the photos from back home with all the support, um, it just goes to show how much women's football has grown um, in Scotland over the last few years. So it really was incredible. So now what's your long-term plans um, for your football career? And um, do you see yourself ever getting tempted back to Rangers? Maybe even slightly later in your career? <laughs> A question that I get asked quite a lot, actually. Um, for now, I'm very happy in Italy, very settled, um, loving the life even off the pitch. So for now, settled, but you never know what the future holds. And if I was to come back to Scotland, there would only be one team that I would be looking to go to. Lara, um, finally for me, kind of looking a wee bit at um, men's football and the Rangers team, do you still manage to um, watch the guys play? And what are your thoughts on um, kind of Steven Gerrard where the club is at the moment, obviously it looks like the season's finished. So going into next season, uh, what are your thoughts um, as a as a supporter on, on Rangers currently? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm at Ibrox every opportunity I have when I'm home, um, follow games all the time. Yeah, obviously as a Rangers fan, you want to be winning things. We've, we've been through hell the last the last while, so we can understand the frustrations of, of not competing for trophies or not being up there um, on top. But we can definitely see the improvement. Um, even just in the mentality and the professionalism that, that Stephen Gerrard's brought into the club has been fantastic. So I think we've just got to be a little bit patient and we've just got to look to the future and hopefully we'll be winning trophies very, very soon. Lana, we like to ask um, all our guests some, some quick questions at the end. So we have a, a couple of quick ones for you. Um, first one being your favourite goal in your career so far. I'm going to have to say the World Cup one just because it's fresh, <laughs> fresh in the mind. Favourite moment in football so far? Yeah, I'm going to just have to say experience in the World Cup. Um, just as a little girl, I never thought that would be possible. So the World Cup, definitely. And your favourite teammate in football? Ooh, I'm going to go with Wee Air just because she's my fellow Rangers fan. So Wee Air and Cuthbert. I put you on the spot there, definitely. Lana, um, thank you for joining us again um, as, as our guest, our first ever guest on... Um, on our women's podcast. Um, I hope you've enjoyed coming on and speaking to us. Um, it's been a real pleasure for all of us to, to have you on. A fantastic name in, in Scottish women's football. Um, we wish you all the best at Fiorentina. We hope you stay safe out there. Um, and thank you again for joining us. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Thank you, Lana. So a brilliant insight into women's football um, for Scotland and in Italy um, from Lana. Brilliant experience out there in Italy. Um, to be able to hear about that is, is phenomenal. Mary, you're obviously a, a massive you know, ambassador and, and women's football fan. What did you make of um, speaking to Lana and how much did you enjoy her stories? I thought Lana was was fantastic. Um, I was lucky enough to be out in France in Nice for the Women's World Cup game against England that she was talking about earlier. And she um, obviously was one of the players that was keeping an eye out during the entire competition. Um, obviously being a Blue Nose helps, but she's um, 
been in and around Rangers teams and always thought she was a really, really talented player. So, um, yeah, it's been fantastic to to hear her side of the story and, and how her football career is going because it's it's realistically for a lot of girls that are interested in football, she's really living the dream. Chris Lanner's undoubtedly one of the, the biggest names in um, Scottish women's foot, football currently. Yes, yeah, so as as Barry was saying, there a real inspiration. If you're a, if you're a girl uh, growing up in Scotland today and you think oh, that football might be the it might be the thing for you, uh, the the journey that Lana has been on uh, from her, her youth career, okay, living the dream, playing for Rangers, getting a good move to Spartans, and then experiencing something out. Out in Italy, it's just a, a great thing, both on and off the part. And a real, a real inspiration, a real uh, role model. Um, the chance to go abroad and play is it something that a lot of Scottish players, meet you know, in the in the men's game or the women's game, it's something that a lot of players don't a get the chance to do, and b if they do get the chance, then don't really keep making the most of. So it's good to see her uh, going out there, really enjoying the lifestyle, uh, and certainly having a really big impact on on the park as well. So uh, interesting to see if she if she pops up at Irox. Uh, once again uh, in the future but I'm sure she's got uh, plenty more uh, to give uh, for Fiorentina and uh, certainly for Scotland over the next couple of years. Yeah definitely um, so this was obviously the first episode um, that myself, Chris and, and Mary are going to do on women's football we hope to be able to attract some um, some guests from, from women's football Lana was certainly a, a brilliant name first but Mary, just kind of finally to ask you, you're, you're obviously involved heavily in, in kind of women's football. I know you've just explained you're at the World Cup and things. Can you tell us a wee bit about um, your role in women's football and um, how you help promote it and, and your ideas for this kind of podcast going forward? Yeah, sure. Um, personally, I'm a long retired footballer <laughs> who really didn't have much of a career, um, especially after talking to Lana. And, um, but... I've been really passionate about football in my life and I'm a massive football fan. Um, but women's football has always particularly interested me and uh, seeing girls that I used to play football with or go to college or uni with uh, going and playing abroad or going on international uh, level is, is phenomenal. And you see the hard work that they've to do to get there. You know, the majority of girls that you see in Scotland um, have full-time jobs. Uh, they have to work extremely hard to get up to that level of professional football and realistically in Scotland we never really had that pathway until quite recently so I was delighted this year to see Rangers taking the step to become a professional club and having our, our girls in full time it's it's really nice to see and, and I'm glad that they've, um, they're, they're going to give young girls that opportunity to live the dream of playing for Rangers. I know I've um, I was slightly more talented. I would love to have had that opportunity myself. Um, but yeah, it's it's phenomenal that the, the, the change in women's football and I was involved in a, a trip last summer to, as I mentioned earlier, to Nice uh, for the World Cup and I'm involved with um, FIFA's fan movement. So they had a big push last year about recruiting supporters of women's football to do some promotional work and to realistically go out and um, follow women's football and share it on social media and talk to people and um, and really just try and, and get some notice on our women's game. So um, selected quite randomly via social media and since then I try and get involved as much as possible in discussions with fans all over the world around the women's game and it's 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 fascinating. There's people from every single country in the world I think involved so the insight and the knowledge you get to know about um, women's football has just you know getting greater and greater and plenty of very very interesting people involved in that as well. Yeah that all sounds brilliant um, hopefully we'll be able to um, entice a few of them on to come and speak to us and tell us more about the women's game. Mary it's just a, a massive thank you um, for joining Chris and I um, on the podcast and um, we'll, we'll get you back again um, hopefully you've enjoyed it. I have and I uh, really appreciate you asking me on and, and giving the opportunity to, to talk to Lana and, and yourselves obviously so yeah um, I'm really excited for you know hopefully getting another good guest on soon and, and getting a chat with him as well. Yeah it's definitely good to have Lana on not once but twice. Um, Chris I'll take the blame for that one. Um, what did you think of the, the first episode of, of our kind of women's podcast and what are you looking forward to going forward? You just can't get the staff, Stevie. Now you, we meant to be getting better at this rather than getting worse at it. But no, it's a good avenue for us to be to be going down. We've also had some really uh, big names uh, 
and some great stories from Rangers title wins and cup wins and some some cult heroes on over the last uh, couple of months. And I just hope the Rangers fans have really enjoyed the, the output we've managed to uh, put together during uh, during lockdown. This is a new key, a different avenue for us. Uh, it's really great to have uh, Mary's uh, support and, and help on it. Um, I say there's there's plenty of good uh, stories in the women's game. A lot of really good uh, personal stories as well as well as football successes. Uh, as I'm sure the I'm sure this uh, the women's podcast that we're going to do will certainly go from from strength to strength over the next couple of months. Yeah, definitely. So all that's been all that's really left to say is a massive thank you, obviously, to Lana Cleland um, for joining us from Italy. A huge thank you to um, our co-host, Mr. Chris Jack. Chris, you can find on um, Twitter, Chris um, Jack underscore eighty nine. Um, I'm sure Chris will be. Glad to hear all your feedback. And you can also find um, Mary McKenzie on um, Twitter. She is at MMCK90. Mary, I'm sure, would be um, love to hear your feedback on, on the women's game. We're obviously at Four Lads of the Dream. Um, come and talk to us, come and tell us who you'd like to hear from in the women's game or you'd like to hear from in the men's game. We will try and, and get them on. Um, and before we go, it's just the usual massive thank you to Stuart Franklin over at Jersnet. He's the one that edits this and makes us sound good. And and our sponsors, who are Customs Kitchen Factory and KGM, who are um, massive, kind of helped us and let us support Rangers Youth Development and, and everything we do here. So, obviously, again, massive thank you to Lana, Mary and Chris. Um, until next time on the Women's Podcast, Thanks for joining us. Ignore the nonsense, the element and the noise. Loyalty to Rangers is what binds us. And together, we are stronger. Launching for the 2021 season, the MyJers membership programme is a new way to get even closer to the club you love. It's the one place where you can access benefits like ticketing priority, club discounts and exclusive competitions and experiences. There's even a limited edition welcome gift when you join. Visit rangers.co.uk slash to join today. Always Rangers, always loyal, always rewarded.